Welcome back to the channel guys, hope everyone's doing well. Today we're going to be tracking down a distant Mestastic station. Basically a new station's popped up in an area where I'm, I can't normally get a contact with. So it's basically behind a massive great hill. So let's take a closer look. So this is my home station. It basically consists of a Samsung Galaxy Tab 9 Ultra, um, amazing screen, but basically it's just, you know, just an Android tablet. So I've got the Mestastic app open on one side and I've got Google Earth on the other, which we'll come to in a minute. Minute. Um, but basically I can see my you know full node list from here now this is connected to three nodes I've got three nodes on a pole outside basically two Yagi's and one omnidirectional antenna now they're all reachable um, by Bluetooth on here and you can see the different stations I've got so these are the different nodes so I can actually tap into each one of these individually if I want to. It's not really necessary because they all relay to each other. Um, they're all in router mode. I was a bit dubious about doing this, first of all, because who knows how you know three nodes in, in one place is going to actually pan out. But it does seem to work pretty well. It's quite cool to be able to just flick onto a particular node, like just look on the omnidirectional antenna or maybe focus on an area by using a Yagi that's pointed in a certain way. It does seem to work quite well that way. But like I say, it's not completely necessary to flip between nodes on here because they all sort of relay each other. So to power all my nodes on the pole at the moment, I'm just using five volts straight up, um, some RG58. Um, you know, it could be better. I could sort of go the um, 12 volt route, but I'm just I've just done this quite quickly when I was setting it up to to do so. Five volts, and then you can see obviously, you know, it goes up to about sort of 0.4 of an amp when things are transmitting. So this is a cool little project power supply meant for RC charging stuff really, but it's it does work quite well. So let's dive over to the tablet and we'll look at this new station that's popped up. So this is a new station, 90B8. Um, you can see the name is seen the video. Now the reason why this has happened, I think, is because in my last video, one of my last videos, I was saying, if you're having trouble getting connections to people, um, why not try putting some information in your name field here? And at the time of making that video, I actually put um, new video out now in my sort of status or my my name field. Um, so it's quite cool that this person's just basically just you know seen that and put this in the um, in in his name field. Now the thing about this station, obviously here now, it was last seen about three hours ago, so that's quite a, a long time. So it's unlikely I'm going to be able to sort of trace route um, that station. Um, I mean, I'm actually connected to my Yagi, which is pointing in that direction at the moment. Um, so, you know, I'm giving it the best shot that it that it obviously can. But as you can see, no, that, that station is probably um, not reachable right now. But the thing is, is it actually on and we just haven't got a path? That's that's the question. So as we can see, it's 7.1 kilometers away. That's, you know, nothing for Mestastic really. But it is quite a long way if there's a lot of obstacles in the way, if it's not completely line of sight. So if we actually tap on this um, this GPS coordinate here, uh, and then go to Google Earth. Now, for privacy reasons, I'm not going to show exactly where it is, but basically you can see here, it's around this area. And now I'm in the distance. So if we head over here, you can see there's basically this massive ridge or hill, um, which is kind of Hartford Heath area. Now that is a problem for this area because basically, you know, you can't, you can't get around this easily. Um, you know, it's not line of sight. So on from here, my station is behind here in this, this sort of area here. So you can see it's quite, it's actually quite flat in this other area, Panzanger Park um, and all, all of that. But, you know, Google Earth is a great tool for doing this because you can actually sort of see, you know, if you look at kind of um, plots of, of the topography of, of the land, they'll obviously just average out hills and stuff. So you can sort of see where those hills are if you're in a relatively flat place like, um, like this. Um, but yeah, big problem, this hill in the way. That's the main main issue. See Hartford Heath there. Now, normally I'd just hop on our Discord and just kind of, you know, send a little message on there and ask who, who this is. And the chances are they'd probably pop up. We've actually got like a node list in um, Discord now. Uh, so, you know, you can actually cross-reference stations that you've seen out and about. That's really handy. So go check that out. I'll leave the link um, below for the Discord if you're not on there already. But anyway, this station doesn't appear to be on Discord. And I'm really intrigued to know what their setup is. I mean, of course, they might actually not be 
um, where they say they are on the GPS because you can do fixed location, which is good for privacy. But, you know, they could be just, you know, around the corner or something like that. They could just be, you know, mobile and have fixed their location um, to something else. So there's always that possibility. But if they are genuinely in that location, that's an interesting one because I've got a node at my parents' house, which is in a similar place, and I can't reach that from here. So something's something's happening somewhere. Maybe it's linking through another one. But this is the fascinating thing about this mesh stuff. It's always really interesting. It always kind of, you know, surprises you. I have actually tried sending a few messages to this station over the last couple of days. Um, I should have said that before. Um, that's the most obvious way to try and get in contact um, with someone. But um, yeah, no, nothing has been delivered and nothing has been, there's been no response. Hence, I think the kind of the, the node um, name changing to sort of say, look, I'm here, you know, um, I am, I am actually listening. <laughs> I'm watching out for you. Anyway, I've changed my name and status to read 90B8. I see you come on Discord and that's going out on my T Echo. So big shout out to you if that's your station and you're watching. I'm actually going to come into the area now. So I'm going to see if I can pick up that station in the area with my T Echo. Yeah, I told you the Twizzy was my little mesh tastic vehicle. <laughs> Off we go again. Needs a bit of a clean and the rear bumper putting back on properly. Right guys, like the Lambo doors. <laughs> so I'm kind of midway, you know we were talking about where the ridge is, well it's kind of in between us, so you can sort of see down there the, the land is sort of dropping away and then it sort of comes back up on the other side. Basically there's a chunk of land in between, you know, my station and this other one, and also where my dad's station is as well. So we're gonna carry on, it's a few more miles till we get to around that area and we'll see if we can pick up the node, be interesting. I should actually check now actually, see if we can see it don't appear to be able to see it but there is a new one here <laughs> what's this one um at minus 122 so interesting that's going out another direction so that's going back home oh no i've got another trace route directly to it um i don't know who that is we'll send them a message anyway <laughs> see if it delivers i'm just holding the radio and the t echo in my hand here just inside the car don't appear to be getting any Acknowledgement. Let's hold the radio outside the car for a minute. I'll just try again. The car's just pulled up, blocking my, blocking my signal. There you go. We've actually got that going through now. So did make a difference just holding it outside the car. Oh, the first one's delivered. That's weird. It's like it acknowledged the second one. <laughs> Never seen that happen before. Uh, so I'm going to have to stay put here for a minute just to see if um, they reply. I'm getting quite a good RSSI from them now. It's like 110, I think. No, even better, 102. So that's not bad at all. Yeah, it's got, we're going straight direct to them now. So I don't know who that is. We'll have to see on, have a look on Discord. wonder where they are. They've got no GPS location at the minute. Maybe that'll pop through. Anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell them to join our Discord and send the link if they're not already. Right, on with the mission. Don't sound like Lambo doors though, do they? Right guys, we are in the vicinity now. So I'm going to have a quick scan in a minute and see if um, I'm just looking out for antennas. <laughs> so this is a station you can see I'm 270 metres away from it now. Um, it's not beaconing, so I'm going to try it and just do a trace route. Good thing about this is once a station is in your node database, then basically it means you can kind of wake it up or send pings to it and things like that, even if it's kind of not beaconing. So, um, you know, it doesn't look to be the case with this one. I think it's actually shut down now, which is a shame because we've come uh, over this way. But um, the other thing I wanted to test is obviously to see if I could see any of my stations from here, which would explain the um, you know the the fact that I'm actually seeing this station pop up at all um, But yeah, no, it doesn't appear to be Doesn't appear to be waking up um, That's a shame There's a nice expanse of open area here, but I'm still not picking anything up, but um, Nothing from my home stations either. So interesting Right guys, I think I might have found it. There's a helium antenna up around here in the area Yeah, I'm not gonna show it for privacy reasons obviously, but that's pretty cool. Right, it's a bit later now. The Twizzy's grown another seat. 
<laughs> not really, I'm in a different car now. But basically, yeah, it's quite interesting that experiment, um, you know, just tr tracking stations down and stuff. I hope you don't mind if you're watching <laughs> um, that station, um, me, you know, trying to find you. I mean, your GPS location's on there anyway. So, um, but, you know, I've obviously kept it private for the video. Um, it's, yeah, it's an interesting one because that is quite a tough location um, to get a signal. It's not line of sight. There's stuff in the way. So um, if that is your station with that antenna outside, that would probably explain the fact that um, you know you're you're getting you know you're getting some good good range there. And maybe I've seen I've seen those beacons pop up, you know, maybe like once an hour, something like that. And I don't think that's because it's beaconing once an hour. And I think that's just because it occasionally manages to you know strike gold and um or <laughs> strike gold but strike my one of my stations so i think what we'll do later is actually point a yagi directly to that um station just see if you know if it comes back online and, and whatever if you're watching yeah just uh, just watch out for that have a look so yeah again guys I, I mean i said it was a helium antenna i was just just presuming but um basically um it, it just looks like a, a kind of a high gain omnidirectional um you know, collinear type thing like we've all been using um, for uh, for Mestastic, and obviously, you know, they originally sort of designed for for helium and everything else, and they just eight six eight megahertz LoRa. Um, but yeah, guys, it's it's um it's interesting. So I hope this encourages you guys to like you know do more kind of not stalking, but. <laughs> you know tracking down stations if you see stations in the distance um they're obviously you know playing the same game as you so um you know it's worthwhile kind of you know trying to make an e extra effort to try and um you know contact them and and see if you can get messages through i know a lot of people have said um you know i've, I've seen conversations happen oh i've got nodes in the distance and i can't i can't send a message to them this is going to be an RF thing totally, like your signal's not strong enough, the path isn't good um, between the two of you, you're just getting sporadic beacons now and again. Um, this is the nature of this stuff, and that's why I was saying that having status messages in your username is a really good way of kind of, you know, trying to get some information out there if you're failing sending messages and they're just not delivering, you're not getting replies. Um, of course, the, you know, we keep saying it over and over again. Um, if people aren't by their, by their stations or they're not looking at the app and you send a message, then it's just like any other app. They might not reply straight away. So there's that to contend with as well. Um, so that's why the Discord's a really good thing. You know, again, I'll leave a link down below to the Discord um, so you can kind of, you know, come up and maybe put your node list, uh, add your node to the node list. Um, that, that, you know, helps a lot uh, in all that. But yeah, other than that, happy meshing. Have a good weekend. Catch you later. <laughs>